Hi, my name is Dr. James DeNicolantonio. I'm a cardiovascular research scientist at St. Luke's Mid-America Heart Institute. I'm here to discuss our paper entitled Added Fructose, a Principal Driver of Type 2 Diabetes and Its Consequences. I'd first like to thank my co-authors, Dr. Lucan and Dr. James O'Keefe, for their contributions to this manuscript. So the idea for this paper stems from the fact that recently there's been a challenge to the a calorie is a calorie type notion. And now we understand that different types of calories have different metabolic effects in the body. Our paper stemmed from the idea that maybe sugar compared to other types of carbohydrates, including glucose, starch, dextrose, lactose, founded milk, there might be a difference in regards to insulin resistance markers, as well as type 2 diabetes. So we did, performed a comprehensive literature review comparing isocaloric exchange of starch or glucose or other types of sugars compared to added sugars, which include high fructose corn syrup as well as sucrose, also known as table sugar. What we found in general was that isocaloric exchange of sugar for starch or glucose or lactose, there was significant metabolic detriments in regards to insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. Potential mechanisms for why we found that sugar was more metabolically detrimental to other forms of carbohydrate include how fructose is metabolized in the body. So fructose actually gets metabolized very rapidly. It causes a reduction in ATP, and that reduction in ATP leads to a decrease in insulin binding in cells. Whereas glucose, it's metabolically controlled by insulin, and it doesn't lead to a rapid depletion in ATP. Fructose also causes oxidative stress and inflammation, it leads to fatty liver and it leads to insulin resistance in the liver. This can then lead to overall insulin resistance throughout the body. Additionally, fructose leads to an increase in VLDL being released from the liver, which also leads to an increase in intramyocellular lipid deposition, leading to skeletal muscle insulin resistance. So these are some potential mechanisms of why sugar is more harmful compared to other carbohydrates for promoting diabetes and insulin resistance. So just to paint the picture, currently almost 40% of all Americans have some form of insulin resistance. And we know that about 30 million Americans have type 2 diabetes. So 10% of, of adults in the United States currently have type 2 diabetes and it's projected that approximately 40% of uh, all Americans will develop frank diabetes. And it is likely that this is being primarily driven by the overconsumption of added sugars. Currently in the United States, the average intake of added sugars is approximately 140 pounds per year. Just a few hundred years ago, this was only four pounds per year in the United States in 1776. So we have increased our consumption of added sugars by 30 fold. And so this is driving our diabetes and obesity epidemic in the United States. And we know that since 1970 and onwards, the increased consumption in carbohydrate has been in parallel with the increased rise in prevalence of diabetes and obesity. We never understood though which type of carbohydrate was driving type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance. And it's clear from our review that this is being driven by sugar, not other forms of carbohydrate. Not to say that other forms of carbohydrate aren't metabolically detrimental, particularly in someone who already has insulin resistance. Additionally, we are not condemning the consumption of fruit or vegetables or any type of other food that has fructose in it. What we have found is the trials that are using refined sugars, those actually are much more potent than what are found in fruits and vegetables, which are also buffered with fiber and phytonutrients. So it's not fructose from fruits and vegetables we need to worry about, it's fructose coming from added sugars. What we found in these studies is that fructose not only drives worsening and in insulin resistance, but compared to other types of sugars, such as glucose or lactose, it's increasing fat storage. It's also leading to worsening in apolipoprotein B, LDL, cholesterol, triglycerides, blood pressure. And this is independent of caloric intake, as well as independent of weight gain. The opponents that try to suggest that it is the additional calories and that it's not sugar itself that is metabolically harmful, aren't actually looking at the trials where we give sugar at ad libitum studies. And what we find is, is that once sugar is introduced, particularly as a beverage, it causes an increased consumption in overall caloric intake. So sugar actually leads to the depletion of ATP in the liver. This leads to a signal that we are hungry, so it drives increased hunger and increased food consumption. 
but in the trials of isocaloric exchange, we're still seeing metabolic harm in regards to an increase um, in insulin resistance. Additionally, one trial showed compared 5% sugar, 18% of total calories as sugar, or 33% calories as total sugar being isocalorically exchanged with starch. The group that only consumed the 5% of total calories from sugar had a 50% reduction in the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes and prediabetes. So our recommendation is to reduce the consumptions of added sugars down to 5% of total calories, and this is also being put out by the World Health Organization as the optimal ideal intake for added sugar consumption. Current dietary guidelines and health, ad, um, and health institutes that are recommending a consumption of added sugar at a certain level, such as the Institute of Medicine, which recommends that we can consume 25% of our total calories as added sugar, is putting the population at risk for not only type 2 diabetes, but the related cardiovascular morbidity and mortality associated with diabetes, as well as the other associated morbidity such as nephropathy, neuropathy, and retinopathy. And of course, diabetes leads to amputations and blindness. And so some of these guidelines and recommendations that we can consume such high levels, including the 2010 dietary uh, guidelines for all Americans, which actually state that we can consume up to 19% of our total calories from added sugars, is putting the population at risk for, for diabetes as well as the related cardiovascular morbidity and premature mortality. We know that patients with type 2 diabetes have a life expectancy of 5 to 10 years shorter than those without. So this is clearly an important topic. We hope that this information has helped you out. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.